Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and today I'm here with an ancient, old, and decrepit royal typewriter that is in desperate need of a clean and some fixin'. So today I'm hopefully gonna straighten this guy out and get him into working order, which is the goal. Now my grandfather actually owned this typewriter and I found it in my grandparents' basement. He carried it from his dorm room to class every single day, which is quite a feat because it weighs like 45 pounds. Um, so today we're gonna clean this guy out hopefully get it working, and then maybe we'll figure out how old it is, because I have no idea. It is at this point that we now realize I have no clue what I'm talking about. Thankfully, my dad is a mechanic, because this simple cleaning process took about a week's worth of restoration. We started by diagnosing the problems. Three of the keys did not work. Zero, three, and X. The carriage didn't advance past a certain point. The platen was lumpy and the feet were rather squished, which is an issue due to the suspension mechanism underneath the machine. We started by taking the machine apart. I removed the ribbon and top cover. After this, we were able to determine that some of the bars inside the typewriter attached to the keys were bent. We managed to bend some of these back in place. We also found that some of the S-shaped hooks that attach the keys to the moving spring-loaded bars inside were missing on the zero and three keys. We found one and managed to fish it out. The other eluded us until we aired out the typewriter and it fell out. The X key had one of the other hooks attached to the key unattached. We removed the front panel and used penetrating oil to loosen up the other keys and remove any rust. We then let this sit overnight and prepped for some more cleaning the next day. On day two, we removed the other panels and then took the typewriter outside. Using an air compressor, we removed dust and grime and the occasional cobweb from inside the typewriter. We then used brake cleaning fluid to remove the penetrating oil residue. After that, we used the air compressor to quickly evaporate the fluid, which left the machine mostly void of grime. This is where we found our missing S-shaped piece. We then took the typewriter inside and attempted to rehook the X key, and using the S-shaped keys, the zero and three. We had trouble managing to fish the hooks into some of the holes on the keys because they required us to bend the spring-loaded mechanisms. We then found that the most effective way to get the hooks back on was to remove the wire holding all the keys in place to the key that we needed to reattach, loop the hook back in, and then reposition the key. We did a quick WD-40 cleaning of all pieces and then let it rest. At this point, we weren't really sure what model of typewriter this was. Using my CSI skills, I tried to match the general shape of my typewriter to the ones I found on the internet. Initially, I thought it was a Royal KHM. This would have been made in the late 1930s and early 1940s, and was popular as a wartime typewriter. This led us to a War Department typewriter cleaning manual, which proved useful when we took apart the platen roller and carriage return later on in this process. While it matched via photo, there were some pieces that didn't match the descriptions I found on these machines. Mainly, our typewriter had its original clear glass panels, while KHMs had standard plastic insert panels. The model before the KHM was the Royal 10. This popular model was actually used in several films, such as Atonement and Stephen King's Misery. The Royal 10s had glass panels, but a very different front panel design. In addition, our serial number didn't match up with either the KHMs or the Royal 10s. We then found through the serial number that it was linked to a Royal 10 KH model, which was a precursor to the late 1930s Royal KHMs making this typewriter a product of 1934. Somewhere between 1934 and when my grandfather was studying at IUP, it ended up partly repaired in a second-hand shop in Indiana, Pennsylvania. The next task was to fix the platen. Ours had inconsistent lumps all over in varying heights, making it impossible for the paper to be gripped and roll through the machine. We did some preliminary research and found that replacements were too expensive, especially since they weren't really being made anymore. We decided to sand down our platen until it was even on all sides and then build it back up to height using plastic mechanical shrimp graph, which my dad had at work in his mechanic shop. We also replaced the felt underneath the keys using some leftover piano felt we had from an unrelated project involving a very old piano. From there, we found some replacement feet online and buffed the machine. With a new ribbon from Amazon, this baby was finally ready for a type test. If you want to see more typewriter content, please subscribe to this channel and follow us on Instagram at just.my.typewriter. All of the links we referenced in this video are linked below, 
And if you post this anywhere, make sure to tag Tom Hanks. See you soon. And remember, you're just my type. Writer. <laughs>